y'all welcome back to biblically blonde and this video we're going to go over the story of lamech who is related to cain it's in genesis 4 17 through 24 so keep watching Alrighty, y'all, let's just get started. Uh, before we get into this, though, let me say, if you are not subscribed, please subscribe. And if you are a returning subscriber, love y'all so much. Okay, the story of Lamech. Now, I know this is confusing to some because there are actually two Lamechs in the Bible, and both of them occur in the book of Genesis. This one is about Lamech, who is the grand, or like the sixth generation grandson of Cain. So he's the first Lamech mentioned in the Bible, and that's who we're speaking about today. The story of Lamech is grouped into the story of Cain and Abel because it's um, included in chapter 4. Chapter 4 of Genesis is the story of Cain and Abel, where Cain murders his, his brother Abel. And I'll link that down below if you want to know more about it, because it's very crucial that you understand the story of Cain and Abel to understand the story of Lamech. Now, a lot of people don't do studies on this at all. It's just kind of like a blurb at the end. And then you move on to Noah and his ancestors because that's where you're going to go next in the book of Genesis. But I want to stop and actually focus in on this story because there's nothing in the Bible that happens for no reason. This story is not just in there for nothing. It's there and we need to find out why. So what happens? Well, if we go back in chapter 4, at the end of the story of Cain and Abel, we see that Cain departs from the presence of God and he goes east into the land of Nod. And so there he has a wife and they make love and they have a son and Cain names the city that he is living in at the time after his son. And then his son then has another son and another son and you get the point. So by the time we get to Lamech, we are six generations from Cain. And so we see a city that has been formed. There is a society forming here. It says that, you know, each one after the, another is more prosperous than the next. We quickly learn that Lamech is the first polygamous man in the Bible. And so he's the first man to take more than one wife. He gloats about it. And then we also learn that Lamech kills a man for what's seemingly a small affliction, like something that isn't really that big of a deal. We're not told exactly what it was, but it certainly wasn't a huge deal or worth a murder. And then we also see him gloat to his wives about it, saying that if Cain is avenged seven times, then Lamech be avenged 77 times. So after Lamech gives his kind of arrogance and his, you know, song of Lamech to his wives, basically boasting of what he can accomplish, we go back to Adam and Eve and learn that Adam and Eve are going to have a third son and his name is Seth. So that is the end of chapter four. That's the end of the story of Lamech. And that's all we really know about him. So there's not much to tell. He is the sixth generation off of Cain. He has two wives. He killed a man and he's arrogant. Okay, so now that we know what happened, let's kind of talk about why, because that's really the most important here is why did this happen? This is a little couple sentences off the book of Genesis. Why does it matter? So the why all goes back to what happened with Cain and Abel, and more specifically what happened with God and Cain. Cain has chance after chance after chance to go to God and repent for his actions when he gives the wrong sacrifice and then once again when he kills his brother Abel. Yet Cain never repents and he never goes back into God's grace. Instead, he chooses to walk away from God's presence. And because of that, none of the generations after him ever know God's presence. And so we see him have six more generations where they don't know God. And yet we see that God is still faithful to them. And so even though Cain decided to walk away from God, God did not walk away from Cain. And so we see a society forming, we see a population growing, we see the society prospering. It tells us in the story of Lamech that both of his sons had great talents and they added to society. And so while the morals and the righteousness of this culture are just going down and going down and going down, they're also prospering at the same time. And that's because God never left them. Now, they may not have had any idea who God was or been following in his presence, but he didn't forget about them because every generation after Cain, including Lamech, were from Adam and they were all sons of God. And so God still kept an eye out on them and he still cared about them. So the why of this story is to show us that even if we walk away from the presence of God, God will never walk away from us. So what does this story tell us about God? 
Well, like I mentioned, he's never going to walk away from us. God could have said, you know what? I'm not going to have anything to do with Cain and his descendants ever again. And he didn't do that. He knew that eventually it was just going to get more and more corrupt. He knew that they were going to have Lamech, who's the first polygamous man. He murders someone. He's full of arrogance. Nothing that God approves of or likes. And yet God still watches all over them. They're still prospering. And they're still doing the wrong. And yet God still loves them. And so it just shows us once again how graceful God is. How at any point in time, any of those ancestors of Cain could have turned back to God. And God would have been receiving of them. So apply. How do we apply the story of Lamech in our lives? Well, listen, if you're going to listen to any part of this message, please listen right here. This is the first instance of generational sin that we have in the Bible that's clearly laid out for us. Lamech runs in the ancestral line of Adam. And so Adam sins and defies God by thinking that he knows best. We then see Adam's son do the same thing, but to a higher degree. And by the time we get to Lamech, they are all repeating the same sin, just at a more high degree. So we see that generational sin runs very strong in the line of Adam, and it runs very strong in all of us. And so the best way we can apply the story of Lamech is by acknowledging whatever generational sin we have in our lives and taking it to God and asking him to get rid of it. Cain chose to walk away from God, and in doing so, he chose that the generations after him would also not know God. And because of that, there was generational sin after generational sin, leading to the man of Lamech, who does not look that great. I mean, he's a murderer, he's arrogant, he's a polygamist. It's just not that great for him. And yet, at any point, we could have turned back to God and asked for that generational bondage to be lifted. Later on in the Bible, we'll see stories like this where they actually do go back to God and ask for forgiveness and for that generational sin to be broken. Now, we're not there yet, but just know you can always do that. And so we can apply the story of Lamech by searching deep within us, seeing what has been passed down to us, and asking God to break those sins and to turn back to him. Alrighty, so that was the story of Lamech. It's just a short little, you know, couple paragraphs in the end of chapter four, but I thought it was really important to give it its own chapter or video, as you will. Some people don't even acknowledge it, but I know for me, when I was reading the Bible, it was one of those blurbs at the end that was really confusing because I got Cain and Abel, but then there's this little thing, and then you move on to Noah, and you're like, okay, well, why is that there? Well, that's why it's there, okay? <laughs> Alrighty, y'all. I will see you next time. We're going to start the story of Noah. So, bye!